biodiversity and natural ecosystems. Let's look at uh, some changes that have significant impacts on our ecosystems. Um, the more biodiversity that we have, the better for the performance of the ecosystem. The rate of photosynthetic activity increases as your biodiversity increases. And if it's a diverse ecosystem, it can withstand a lot of environmental changes and invasions by other species. Some of the causes of species extinction are habitat loss. This is 85% of the problems with species becoming extinct is because their habitat is lost. Exotic species that are introduced to an area that are not native to that area will cause 50% extinction and pollution obviously has an effect uh, affecting as much as 24 percent also over exploitation that will cause problems and disease now looking at habitat loss this happens in all ecosystems um, it's a big concern for our tropical rainforests and our coral reefs because once they're gone, you can't recreate them. And habitat fragmentation, where the habitat is um, cut up, like you see up here in the top right with the roads that cut through the forest, or where the forest is in patches, it's fragmented. So it will cause loss of a lot of the different species that are there. In the picture with the beautiful birds, that's the macaw. I believe that you're looking at, and um, they're on a salt link, a lick, sorry, salt lick, and you can see habitat loss leads the cause of extinction, loss of species, bringing in alien, exotic species, pollution, overexploitation, and disease. You can see that they all affect loss of these birds. Now, looking at exotic species, these are not native to the area. They migrate in or get introduced and they uh, will cause problems. Um, sometimes humans introduce them um, with colonization or in horticulture or agriculture with colonization. The pig pilgrims brought in pigs. They, that's where our feral pigs that are such a problem came from. Uh, with horticulture and agricultural, we're very familiar down here in the south with kudzu. That was brought in as an ornamental plant, and you see how it takes over. And then, of course, accidental transport, where you have uh, an example would be the zebra mussels that get on the ships, and then they go into different bodies of water, and the native mussels uh, are squeezed out because there's not enough food by these zebra mussels, and so you lose the native mussels in the area because they're competing for the same resources. And you see that kudzu there. And that mongoose over there, that was brought in to control rats in Hawaii. The problem is now, if you look in his mouth, they're eating birds. So they don't always do what you plan on them doing. Now pollution, this is an environmental chain that has an adverse effect on what's living. It's the third main cause of extinction. Um, acid de deposition, um, this is a big problem. The sulfur dioxide from power plants and the nitric oxide from our automobile exhaust, those are converted to acid and that makes our trees weak and more susceptible to disease and insects. It also kills the invertebrates and the decomposers, so it causes bad problems. Eutrophication, where you've got so much fertilizing of fields and lawns going around, and the runoff from that over enriches bodies of water, and you have eutrophication. Ozone depletion, uh, chlorine that comes from the CFCs, uh, like Freon, this impairs crop growth. Organic chemicals, uh, you've got these phenols that are in pesticides, in your dishwashing detergents, in cosmetics, in plastics. They mimic the effect of hormones, and that affects animals 
including humans that use those products. And then there's global warming that we hear a lot about in the news. This influences everything uh, from the growing seasons in the plants to the migratory patterns of the birds. Now, overexploitation. I didn't define what it was a while ago, so we're going to do that now. It's the number of individuals taken from the population. Um, it's so great that the population gets severely decreased in numbers. And it's a positive feedback cycle. The smaller the population, the more you need the members. And so there's a greater incentive to go out and capture those few organisms. Um, like your poachers do. The market is what forces overexploitation. People buying exotic pets, pets like parrots or tropical fish or these rare cacti that you can buy. That causes overexploitation and can lead to extinction. Poaching. Um, Poachers will kill to get the hides from animals, the claws, the tusks, the horns, the bones. Well, they're killing healthy animals. And then overfishing. This, when we have bigger, more efficient fleets of ships or fishing vessels, then they're overfishing an area. And that leads to extinction. A technique used to conserve species is habitat preservation, if we can save their habitats. Now, a, key a keystone species is a species that plays a critical role in maintaining the structure of the ecological community. And the impact of the community is greater than would be expected based on the number of that species or the total biomass. For instance, bats in a tropical rainforest are pollinators. So if they're destroyed, reproduction stops in all your plants. Uh, bears are a keystone species in forests because they disperse seeds. So both of these would be considered keystone species because they have such a great impact in their community. Landscape preservation is something that can be used where you try to take care of the, the area where um, the species benefits from other wildlife in the same space. Also, habitat restoration, where you restore the habitat back to what it was prior to it being degraded or harmed. And there's three um, things that are important, three principles of restoration ecology. You need to begin as soon as possible before any more fragments are lost. Um, you need to use biological techniques that mimic the natural process, like using control burns to bring back the grassland habitats. And the goal of all this is sustainable development, the ability of the ecosystem to be self-sustaining while still providing resources or services to humans.